Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So I recently released a video on this radio, the Ambry AR2520, which is a cool little dual band mobile radio. Now at the time of making this video, I did not have the programming software to hand. So in this video, I'll briefly go through that software so you can program your radio. Now there were also some other questions raised when I released the video, like what does it look like inside? Is it just a handheld PCB? There was also some other topics of conversation about those little data packets that can be assigned to send at the end of every transmission. Now in this video, we'll go through each of those and hopefully answer those questions. So first up is the programming software. Now I know some of you have had trouble in locating this online, so I'll leave a link below where you can go ahead and download it from. Now the programming software is just like other packages we've seen in the past and the first thing you need to do is tell the software which COM port the radio is connected to. The programming cable does plug into that RJ45 socket on the front of the radio and you can grab one of these cables from the likes of eBay or Amazon for around $10. Now once the COM port has been selected just go ahead and perform a read. Now this will download all of the radio's memories and settings to the software. The first tab, Channel Settings, is where you can edit your memories. For example, you might want to store some local repeater frequencies, which includes things like offset and CTCSS tones. Now, each memory can also have an alpha tag assigned, which you can enter on the far right column. This will then show on the screen of the radio when that memory has been selected. The next tab along, titled Basic Settings, includes some rather interesting settings. The first at the top is the personal ID. Now this can be used within the Roger Beep setting on the radio so that instead of a Roger Bleep, a small packet of data is sent with the personal ID text. This then displays on the receiving radios, which I'll demonstrate shortly. Now below this is where you can also edit the main startup logo, the image which is displayed when the radio is powered on. Now this is great if you want to brand your radios for like your radio club or etc. Now to do this, just import an image using that import button and then adjust the scale so it fits within that predefined square. Now to send this to the radio, you have to use the right button from within this tab. Now I'll show you in a moment what this looks like on the radio itself when we go ahead and turn it on. The next tab along titled Basic Settings 2 is where we find most of the radio settings in an easy to set fashion. Now most of the settings are drop down combo boxes allowing you to make a quick selection. Turning off voice prompts and key beeps were the first settings that I changed on this screen as I know they can get quite annoying. Now the P buttons on the radio can also be defined here for short press or long press. But what I did find missing was the power level now normally we have an option where we can assign one of the programmable buttons the RF power output so you can easily switch between low and high power but it appears this is missing. Now incidentally you can't change this on the radio too so you do have to go into the radio's menus if you want to change power levels. Now it's not a big deal but it would have been nice to be able to assign the power level to one of the programmable buttons. The DTMF settings tab allows you to add and edit some DTMF macros. Now this is quite useful if you're using something like Echo Link, for example. The radio settings tab at the end only has a couple of options and to be honest I didn't really change anything here. Now with the memories added and the radio settings changed to how I like it, it's now time to upload this to the radio. Now this is performed by simply pressing on the right button at the top of the application window. And once it's been sent to the radio it will power off and you manually have to turn it back on by holding that rotary button in for a couple of seconds. Now, as you can see here, the logo that we uploaded earlier now displays on the screen as you power up the radio. You can also switch between VFO and memory mode by pressing the button here on the right of the display. Using the up and down arrow buttons on the front of the radio or on the microphone allows you to cycle through those memories. You'll notice that the memory channel name is shown at the bottom of the screen and the frequency is still shown in that same location as it was before. Now in order to simulate another one of these radios sending either the personal ID or GPS data at the end of a transmission, I used my HackRF with Portapack to record a transmission from this same radio. 
I then replayed that recording over the air and the Abri AR2520 decoded it perfectly. First, I tested the personal ID, which I just set to my ham radio call sign. Here you can see it shows up at the bottom of the screen, M0DQW. Now I then tested the GPS data and for this I was expecting to see GPS coordinates. But what it actually shows is a calculation of your current location and the received signals location and then shows it on screen like this. Now this appears to be a bearing showing here at southeast 78 and then a distance which I can only presume is in meters. Now some of you was curious to know what this radio looks like inside. Well, here it is. Now it definitely looks like the main board has been designed purely for this radio and it's not a handheld radio board plonked inside of a mobile radio case. As you can see here on the front panel PCB, there are two areas where it appears some components are missing. Now first is the TF or micro SD card slot, which looks like it should go here. Then we have this area, which looks like a Bluetooth module of sorts should be fitted. Now I'll say this because there appears to be a small antenna on the PCB itself. And this is something which is quite common with internal Bluetooth in devices like this. Now from what I can tell, this here appears to be the GPS antenna mounted at the top of the front panel. For me, I had to put the radio near a window to get a good GPS lock. And with it sat on my desk a few feet away, it was quite intermittent. However, I'm pretty sure if you were to install this in your motor vehicle, it should get a reception quite well. Now, another topic of conversation in the last video was about the 3.5 millimeter socket on the back of the radio. And from my testing, it wasn't an external speaker. Now, unfortunately, I could not get to the other side of the ball to see what's connected to that 3.5 millimeter socket. Well, not without completely disassembling the whole radio. And that's something that I just didn't really want to do as it involved unscrewing the main board and desoldering some of the connectors. Anyway, guys, there you go. Hopefully that's answered some of your questions. And if you get in one of these radios or if you've already got one, let me know down in the comments below how you're getting on with it and how you're finding it actually using it on air. I think it's quite an interesting radio, especially if in the near future we do see it come out with a TF card slot and Bluetooth. I think it could open up quite a lot of possibilities and other projects that can be used with this radio if those features are included. Anyway, guys, until the next video, stay safe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.